Control of the United States Senate runs through the Treasure State, and both parties know it. This is the state where both parties have so far spent the most money leading into the elections in November, and I expect this is a trend that will continue. The fact that Montana will be the tipping point of who will control the Senate next year is a good sign for Republicans, as it was a state that voted for Trump by over 16 points in 2020. It goes without saying that with Trump on the ballot again, Senator John Tester will have a steep hill to climb. The Republican primary in this race is all but over. Tim Sheehy will be the Republican nominee against Tester, and he will be mostly uncontested. Matt Rosendale chose to drop his Senate bid just days after he launched it, with Trump's endorsement of Sheehy being too powerful for him to overcome. It is unclear to me and to anyone else if Steve Daines decided to sweeten the deal to get Rosendale out of the race. Rosendale dropping out could have come with a number of things, including an endorsement for re-election and shielding from a potential McCarthy-backed primary challenger, as McCarthy is doing to Bob Good and Nancy Mace, and maybe others as well as the potential promise that Danes will retire in 2026 and allow Rosendale to take his seat. Rosendale also could have just seen the writing on the wall, or acquiesced to Trump's demands. Any one of these things is possible, but it's worth noting that Danes pulled out every single stop to get Sheehy nominated. This was his pet project and chief focus since getting elected NRSC chair, so I would not rule a last-minute secret deal behind the scenes out. Hopefully, Rosendale runs for re-election. He's one of the best congressmen we have. Tim Sheehy is a political newcomer, a transplant from Minnesota that got to Montana around 10 years ago. He's a former Navy SEAL who's very close with Congressman Ryan Zinke. He's also worth hundreds of millions of dollars and owns several businesses, including an aerial firefighting company called Bridger Aerospace. Sheehy is likely to be attacked as a carpetbagger and an out-of-touch, rich elitist that is driving up property costs with his mansions and that he represents everything that Montana hates. John Tester, however, has been in the state for a very long time. He's the descendant of Mormon pioneers. He ran a farm and butcher shop prior to running for the state senate, where he worked his way up to senate president in 2005 before ousting incumbent senator Conrad Burns in 2006. Do you know the Yellowstone meme? Yeah, that's John Tester. Right wing aesthetically, but leftist to the core on just about every issue. Republicans will attack him on his record. There's plenty to occupy commercial breaks there from here until Election Day. According to one poll done just a few days ago, Sheehy is currently losing to Tester by nine. A morning consult poll put out in the fall of this year has John Tester as America's fourth most popular senator. He apparently has an approval rating of 61 and a disapproval of 31. For comparison, Steve Daines has an approval of 51 and a disapproval of 37. This is such a comically absurd number that it is impossible for anyone to take seriously, aside from partisan liberals. These are the raw vote percentages that Tester has received in every election for Senate he's ever had. 50.3 in 2018, 48.6 in 2012, and 49.2 in 2006. In 2006, he won by 0.9. In 2012, he won by 3.7. And in 2018, he won by 3.5. Now, we're apparently supposed to believe that Montanans approve of his job performance by a 30-point margin. They certainly haven't proved it in the 18 years in which he's been a statewide elected official. In fact, they've proved that they actually don't like him very much, because they keep barely electing him in years that vastly favor them nationally. On top of that, polarization is way worse now than it was in 2018, 2012, or in 2006. Ticket splitting is also way lower now than it was in 2018, 2012, or in 2006. I have yet to see any piece of evidence that Montana is going blue anytime soon, so if Trump repeats anything close to his 2020 or his 2016 performance in the state, Tester is done. You aren't going to see 17 points of vote splitting Trump Tester voters. This is a whole new environment for him. Two of his previous elections were blue wave years, and the other was 2012 when the environment was so unpolarized that Joe Manchin won by 24, Claire McCaskill won by 15, and Joe Donnelly won by 3. I would like you, the viewer, 
to go check in on how the political careers of those three are doing. Even if we assume that 61% of Montanans approved of Tester's job performance, are we really convinced that that number is going to stick around after eight months worth of ads bashing him and tying him to Joe Biden, who is deeply unpopular not only in Montana and in every state around it, but nationwide as well? John Tester's record is not even as moderate as he would like to claim. He's left-wing on every issue and he voted to impeach Trump both times. It's just not reasonable to expect him to win this race at the end of the day. John Tester is going down. In 2020, the Montana Senate race was hyped up to an extreme degree, with Democrats putting $82 million into electing Steve Bullock over Steve Daines. Daines ended up winning by 10. Polling was awful right down to the end. The aggregate had Daines winning by less than a point on 270 to win, and Steve Bullock led 9 of the 23 polls conducted in the race. A complete joke, and it's likely to be that bad again. Tim Sheehy is going to win this race by 4 points. I think Trump wins the state by 17. That's 13 points of vote splitting. I think I'm being fair there. Republicans absolutely have the edge. They've made taking out Tester their absolute top priority here, and they're going to get him this time. For those of you like me who supported Matt Rosendale, I encourage you to back Tim Sheehy. He's better than Tester, and he might end up surprising us just like Roger Marshall or Tommy Tuberville. For some odd reason, I'm optimistic. This has been Elect Right. Make sure to subscribe and leave your thoughts on Montana's Senate race below. America first, and America always.